Hello everyone and welcome back and again before I get started in this talk which is the part two uh, if you haven't seen it please check out the part one about this talk and we're going to talk a little bit about um, the spiritual concepts of do unto others as you would like them to do unto you you reap what you sow and karma all of these are related spiritual concepts and before I get into the talk I as always want to thank those who support me in the teaching and help spread the word so all of my patrons on patreon everyone who has contributed via PayPal and Venmo even if it was just once and of course everyone who likes and subscribes and comments on YouTube all of these things do help out so thank you okay in our last talk we looked at how if you want something you should give it this is a spiritual concept or idea that if we want to receive something if we want more of something in our lives then we have to give it to have it now this is just a spiritual law or principle now I'm not speaking strictly physically so please don't misinterpret this teaching to think that oh if I want more money I'm gonna give someone five dollars a man on the street five dollars and then a bunch of money is gonna come my way it's not really exactly what we're talking about here this has more to do with again your inner state so money is represented by um, could say be said to be a representation of abundance so again what am I abundant in what can I share how can I share the abundance I have what do I have in abundance and how do I share that and give that to others it's not an idea of oh I want money so I'm gonna give money it's not, it's not so one for one or literal like that okay so what matters to us as human beings is how we feel so I'm, again I'm not talking about physical as I explored last time um, we can have a lot of physical wealth and actually still feel poor we can have a lot of people that love us and feel unloved okay so how much love is enough for me to feel loved how much wealth is enough for me to feel abundant um, these are relative and subjective so there are people in the world who live in what we in the West would consider poverty and they exude a glow and a joy that we rarely see here in the West actually so again I want you to really focus on when I'm talking about feeling abundant feeling loved um, it's how we feel inside it's not whether we can measure that whether other people think that about us so again if I see someone who's living in poverty but they are exuding joy then they have a kind of wealth that many of us in the West are lacking even though they may not have physical wealth okay having said that these things can often manifest externally because the external is a very often just a reflection of what we're experiencing inwardly so to have something from a spiritual perspective we must actually give it to really have it so again physically I may have wealth but if I do not give abundantly if I do not share abundantly I will not experience my physical wealth as wealth okay when I act from the perspective of lacking something then I actually perpetuate this perspective in my experience in a sense I'm making it real but if I act 
as if I have something, an abundance of something by giving it away, then I have to have it to give it. So it's a weird sort of circular thing of by giving it, I'm actually proving to myself that I already have it because you already do have it. You actually have everything in abundance. But we may not know this again until we begin sharing it, okay? So this is found in Christian teachings and the teachings of Jesus as one form of it is you reap what you sow. Um, and also the golden rule, which is do unto others as you would have done unto you. Um, and this is found in the teachings of the East in what is usually called karma. So karma comes from a Sanskrit word, karman, and that just basically means to act. Now these teachings, for whatever reason, uh, are very often interpreted in a moralistic or ethical way. But the truth is they're not actually in the original forms of these teachings and the deep spiritual forms of the teachings. These are not, they're not talking about what it means to be a good or correct or perfect saintly person. That wasn't the intention behind these teachings. These teachings were just simple spiritual truths. Um, they're spiritual laws. These are things you want to observe because again, if you want something, the only way you're really going to have the experience of having it, the experience of having it, the only way you're going to feel like you have it is to give it, is to share it, okay? Is to, in essence, already have it and then give it to others. This is the only way you're actually going to experience that on a deep, satisfying level, okay? So this is just simply the way the universe works, whether we like it or not, whether we recognize it or not, right? I can pretend like gravity doesn't exist, I can ignore it, but it's still gonna work. So I can jump off a roof saying there's no gravity, and yet I'm going to hit the ground regardless. It doesn't, doesn't require my belief. It doesn't require my understanding. It's simply gonna work. And this is the same of spiritual laws and truths, okay? So these teachings are often misunderstood even by spiritual teachers, even by gurus, even by many people who are high up in the church or in different religious organizations. This is very common in spirituality. Um, once they, uh, a spiritual organization gets to a certain size, and even without that, you can have a small group like Jesus's group, 12 disciples, and you could say none of his disciples really understood what Jesus was trying to teach, at least at the time of his death. So, there's no guarantee that a teaching will be carried on by those who were in contact with the teacher, those who followed the teacher, uh, those who revere the teacher. It's not uncommon for a spiritual teaching to be misunderstood um, and then propagated by those who misunderstand it. So there can be very often common interpretations of spiritual teachings that are actually incorrect from a deep spiritual perspective. The church or a certain religious organization may even say this is the official uh, <laughs> proper interpretation of this scripture and it may actually be wrong from the perspective of the person who initially taught it, okay? These teachings have also been used by uh, religions and societies to manipulate and control the masses. Um, and that's just the way that's just human history. And this is the sad thing about spiritual teaching is it can very easily be co-opted by and used by the ego um, to actually strengthen the ego's um, hold on us. And it's actually been used that way, perhaps more so 
than what the spiritual teachings are initially designed to do, which is actually liberate us or from the ego or to dissolve the ego. So the ego is very good at co-opting spiritual teaching for its own ends. And this is an example of a teaching like that, where very often uh, these teachings are not uh, shared in a way that actually empowers people, um, but is used instead to control, manipulate them. So as many of you have heard me say, true spiritual, te spiritual teaching is about your heart and your mind. It's about your inner life. Um, these teachings are meant to affect your inner life, the quality of your inner life, your sense of peace and joy as you go through your day every day. Ultimately, there really is no distinction between the inside and the outside. I know that may not make sense to many, um, but this is the truth. And one day you will hopefully experience that for yourself. You'll see that uh, as true yourself, just experientially. Um, but until then, it can be helpful sometimes to focus on what we call the inside. And so that's what these teachings are uh, for or about. So anyway, if you want more of something in your life, you can think about what it is you'd like more of in your life, whatever it is. It could be peace, it could be more joy, it could be happiness, love, abundance, uh, anything really. Uh, find ways that you can start to share these things. And again, don't be uh, so literal necessary. Think in broad terms and think about how you feel. So again, what would make you feel abundant? What would make you feel loving? Um, what would make you feel like you were bringing peace into a situation that was perhaps not peaceful? And by sharing these things, you will find that you already have them. Even though you may now feel cut off or lacking, you will find that you actually already have whatever it is that you're seeking. But you know that by giving it away. All right. So I hope that this was helpful. As always, please, if you're on YouTube, like, subscribe, comment, just say hi. Give me a question if you've got one. And again, thank you to all my supporters who support me financially doing this work. It really is a huge, huge help. Until next time, namaste and have a great day.